what do you make of a nation that lies repeatedly that feels no shame in uttering inanities about bhaichara while instigating terrorism across the border that seems to think that the world is blind to its two facedness pakistan is failing as a nation and seems to be grasping at straws when its foreign minister makes unfortunate remarks at forums such as the un china their buddy seems to be faring no better we shall talk about all this and more with the most charming deepa kora ji who also happens to be one of india's best looking ambassadors <laughs> thank you for confirming that <laughs> yes i had to <laughs> thank you i have i have visual proof <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so namaste deepa ji welcome yet again to our current affairs show and it's a delight to have you with us um as as you must have heard in my opening remarks i would want to lead with uh, bilawal bhutto's uh, unfortunate remarks uh, about pm modi at the at the un recently so um what are your thoughts on that first of all thank you very much ms krishna always a pleasure to be on your outstanding show i'm told that you you're hitting several million views i mean you've broken all previous records in a very short time and that's thanks to dedicated reporters interviewers people like you who are linked with the you call it what city me city media city it's actually chit 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 for uh, consciousness understood chit so you you know since you are with city media and and all of you are absolutely outstanding thank Now, you you asked me a question about somebody what name did you take uh, i think the name the gentleman's name is bilawal bhutto who she no okay all right okay <laughs> Let me answer this, ma'am, and let me tell it to you straight the way it should be done. In interstate as well as in interpersonal relations, rivalry and jealousy is most normal. In fifty years of diplomacy, I've seen this time and again, especially with nations that are neighbors or in the same region. The examples that come readily to my mind are former USSR, USA, East Germany, West Germany, India, Pakistan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Sudan, South Sudan. North Korea, South Korea, China, Taiwan, Malaysia, Indonesia, Argentina, Brazil, Iran, Saudi Arabia. You know, there's any number, but these are the ones that I can think of immediately. Relationships may have their ups and downs, and bonhomie may triumph from time to time, but the deep-rooted feeling of rivalry persists. It's as if every nation wants to be one up on the Jones fellow who's the other nation. But a nation gets into trouble when jealousy becomes its obsessive compulsive disorder. You've heard of a person called Chanakya. I read him every day before going to bed. He had said 2,400 years ago, "The wicked burns with the fire of jealousy, seeing the prosperity of others. Since he cannot progress due to his shortcomings, he starts deriding others." How true is this of our neighboring country? You named it. Uh, the country that's that's made there used to be a cricket player who said he was the prime minister or something like that, and there's some badmash there who claims to be Sharif and says I'm the prime minister. <laughs> Now, people who are jealous at another at at the prosperity of others are basically very incompetent. Jealousy is eating up Khakistan. I don't call it what its name. You know, Khak means dust, so it's eating up Khakistan, the self-styled defender of Islam. even though its antics embarrass most other islamic nations now listen to this ma'am and the millions of people watching your show i want to stress this till 15 years ago pakistan's per capita was higher than india's it is now half of ours so what does it do it does nothing but compose jeremiads against india their litany of complaints and crying all the time why In 2022, prices are soaring, savings are collapsing, food is disappearing, medicines are vanishing, energy is evaporating, growth is sputtering, water is drying, floods have ravaged the land. But our friends from Pakistan live in La La Land. Recalling a comment about that country attributed to the Singaporean legend Lee Kuan Yew, you know, ma'am, what he said, and forgive me, आप हमारी बेटी की उम्र की हैं. How can you help people? this is attributed to lee kuan yew who are more interested in their virgins in the afterlife than in life in this world True. he asked this question so jealousy is the tribute that mediocrity pays to genius the envious mm-hmm. die not once but as oft as the envied win applause 
what is India's reputation today? We saw this in Bali, ma'am, when we were there for the G20 summit. The number of people lining up to greet India's Prime Minister, lining up to meet our diplomats, our ministers, etc. All of them said, we admire you. You're a modern, progressive, fast-moving nation. We see your pride, your self-confidence, your self-reliance, and your self-esteem. Whereas Kakhstan is considered universally to be a regressive, non-state, you know, they, uh, they talk of non-state actors, they are a non-state themselves, a perennial beggar stuck in the medieval ages. So when Pakistanis crossed the land border into India, we asked them to set their watches forward by 1,400 years. We are not in the 6th <laughs> century. We live in the year of our Lord 2022, <laughs> since we are recording this on the 18th of December. Now, the foreign minister of Pakistan, the foul mouth Billy the Kid, and his deputy, Miss Hina, something, Rambar, uh, Khar, yeah, with whom he, by the way, he reportedly had an illicit liaison with her a decade ago when she was a foreign minister. Now she's his deputy. So if they use most foul language against India and its prime minister in the United Nations in December 2022, why am I not surprised? By using this language, Billy the Bum has demeaned himself, his family, and his country. This was not a declamation contest, but a serious interaction with the media in the United Nations. The poor chap, he says what his military wants him to do, forgetting that the military hanged his grandfather and assassinated his mother. And one of his mother's two brothers was killed by the Pakistani police. People, are, people claim that it was in the orders of this fellow's mother when she was the prime minister. The other died in mysterious circumstances. Now, a decade or so ago, Hillary Clinton had warned the same Miss Khar standing next to her that you cannot rear snakes in your backyard and expect them to bite only your neighbor. It seems Billy Hunter got bitten by one of those snakes and imbibed its venom. If you remember the books, ma'am, you probably read Billy Bunter's books. Well, they were, his defining characteristics were greediness, laziness, deceit, slothfulness, self-importance, and conceit. The half smirk on this Billy's face throughout his monologue suggests that unhappiness consumes him. His India con Indian counterpart, the best foreign minister in human history, Dr. S. Jai Shankar, I know him well. He belongs to my service. He has spent more years in diplomacy than Billy has spent on this planet. He is universally <laughs> respected and admired. I've seen Arab and Asian and African and European leaders and diplomats pay tribute to his wisdom and insight. You know, they often quote him. He has put pesky European journalists in their place. A former India-hating prime minister of Kakhstan, a cricket player, he now composes hosannas in praise of India's prime minister and foreign minister. What is interesting is that Pakistan's political analysts, uh, see, I took the name of that place, its leaders, politicians, and even the usually hyperactive social media are silent on the gutter level language that Billy Bunter has used. Mm -hmm. There's no sense of outrage. I wonder why. Is Pakistan in so much turmoil, political, social, and economic, that its people have no time for anything else? Or is the media embarrassed by the antics of a clown who masquerades as the foreign minister? Through the years, he has been lampooned by his country's media. I've seen some of those uh, videos where he goes around saying, Hum khun denge, lekin bhutto banega Pakistan ka neta. Hum sab kuch karenge, lekin bhutto banega Pakistan ka neta. The idea being that I have a divine right to rule this fika <laughs> that was built by my, whatever, my grandfather, whose own father also was an absolute scoundrel in the, in the Junagad, Imbroglio, etc. plate. So deceit and treachery is in the DNA of these characters. I hate to say that, yeah. but doctors have told me that, yes, that is true. Now, what should, how should we respond to what Billy the buffoon has said? I think a New York trash collector, of course, this is apocryphal, has asked him, sir, where do you stash the garbage that you spew? I can go and collect it in advance. There, there is an international day against hate speech. Do you know it's celebrated in June every year? It was decreed by the United Nations. But Billy, Billu, Billy Buddhu probably doesn't know anything about it. You cannot hate other people without hating yourself. And let me conclude, ma'am, this thing about uh, the, the, the bump. 
that in 2019, just weeks after we abrogated Article 370, ending Kashmir's semi-autonomy, so to speak, and we mainstreamed it into the great Indian family, anger in Pakistan was palpable. Electronic billboards, they depicted barbed wire and dripping blood. They counted the time since the Indian government imposed a curfew on the territory. And at a Pakistan National Defense University conference, both officers and civil society leaders, and I, I wasn't there, I was told, spoke about the horrible situation of Indian Kashmir. It's like the Gaza Strip, one activist claimed. And when asked, have you ever been to Gaza or Kashmir? And very shamefacedly said, no. Then how do you know it's like the Gaza Strip? Now, three years later, it is clear that while Kashmiris under Pakistani control remain hobbled by a moribund economy and suppressed by the Jamaati Islami kind of extremism, Kashmiris in India have security. They taste freedom. They thrive. The signs are everywhere, man. I've been to Sri, uh, Srinagar more than once in the last year. Yes, there is Indian police there. They have their checkpoints, but those checkpoints are unmanned. And traffic flows. I went to Lal Chowk, which used to be a very dangerous place. There was the Indian flag fluttering. Everything was normal. The emergency is over. I mean, long after nightfall, there were people moving around, young people, not so young people, absolutely enjoying themselves. And then, of course, I knew it was back to normal. If you speak Punjabi, I suddenly heard, I'm a Punjabi, I heard somebody calling out, Anji, samosa khane hai? Would you like some samosas? And, I and there was a there was a, a Mr. Singh who had got his little dhava over there and was selling being hot samosas. I knew Kashmir was back to normal. So let me conclude this portion by uh, saying, ma'am, if you permit that, the rich people in Eastern Europe who loot state resources in collusion with the regime, there's a word they use for them. What are they called? Oli, Oli, what? <laughs> That's a, what, what's the word again? Oligarchs? Uh, oligarchs. So Billy the buffoon actually is a oligarch. <laughs> True. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's up to. And we just leave it, uh, you know, leave him at it. Who is his role model? His godfather, China, that deals so nicely with its Muslim Uyghurs. I the know. previous that had said, I don't know anything about the Uyghur who should never heard of that. So this guy now says that India treats its Muslims very badly. Oh, dear me. Um, what do you know about how we treat them? And after his shameful performance, a journalist from France, I studied in France, he yeah. watched me. He said, uh, Mr. Ambassador, what do you think of Pakistani diplomacy? <laughs> I think it would be a good idea. I borrowed <laughs> it. That's, that's Ma'am, if your enemy is destroying himself, why should you disturb him? Success must attract enemies as a flame attracts moths. This kid, really, he has done himself and his country no good by opening his mouth and uh, whatever came out of it was certainly not the kind of language that we are used to. And I think, um, so if I may, I, I found that so entertaining. It was informative, but it was... It was your candor is just it's it's it's, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's refreshing. It's amazing, and it's it's just so much humor. So it's suffused with so much humor that I couldn't help laugh out uh, while you were. Well, in the thank you. Well, I look at this character. I start laughing because he had this little half smirk, and there's so yes. much going. And you know, Osama bin Laden is dead, <laughs> but hey, hey, hey. What kind of nonsense is this? I mean, was this a college or a school declamation contest? Exactly. The man hasn't, he, he's in his 30s, but I don't think mentally he's beyond six. There is some kind of a disease that he seems to have been born with. Oh, calling him the Rahul Gandhi of Pakistan. Well, <laughs> who's she? <laughs> Sorry, man. <It's> very droll. <laughs> so... No I, th I think I think you've said it all uh, that uh, the Bilawal Bhuttos of this world, the Billy the Butcher, the Billy Billy the Buddhu, Billy the Buddhu, and, and many <laughs> other epithets you came up with. Um, I think I think the less said of these people, the better, because they don't matter in the long run. So uh, you know, may I say something? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, ma'am. 
he used very objectionable gutter le level language against our prime minister. His grandfather had done the same. You're too young to know this. This was in 1965 uh, after Pakistan had uh, by treachery invaded us and we hit back. We crossed the border into Punjab and Sialkot and so on and they were on the verge of collapse. So the senior Mr. Bato was at that time uh, addressing the UN Security Council. So in a very well-planned move, the Indian delegation, led by Sadar Swaran Singh, our foreign minister at that time, whom I knew and respected a great deal, they walked out. It was the first time, the first time in the history of the UN Security Council that a major nation had walked out at a point when uh, the senior Mr. Bhutto said, ah, the Indian dogs are leaving. Now what happened? All the other members said, this is not language we accept. We shall not ever discuss Kashmir again or uh, allow it to be discussed. So Robert Merton's law of unintended consequences kicked in. And for 40 years after that, nobody ever talked of Kashmir. So these guys score self-goals all the time. Exactly. But who's going to teach them? Yes, yes. And, and we should... Like you said, let's keep a good thing going. Let's not disturb. <laughs> <laughs>